In fact, strikingly, Isaiah 53 contains the soliloquy, the first eight passages of the first 53rd chapter, the very chapter that Christians weaponize to convert Jews to Christianity. This is so sad. This is why my heart goes out to Christians. Nebuch, Nebuch. Shalom. My name is Ira. I live in Babylon, Long Island, New York. And um, I am a huge fan of the rabbi. Um, I have a question. This is my question. What are the signs in the Bible, in our Bible, our Tanakh? What are the signs of our Messiah coming? What do we look for? I know you said in the past we're in the, you know, probable, you know, end days. So if you don't mind, Rabbi, can you please uh, answer that for me? God bless. Thank you for doing what you do. You're bringing many hearts back into the fold. Thank you, Rabbi. When the true Mashiach comes, the most critical and central event that will unfold is that the whole world will know the truth. In fact, anything else I share with you will be a subset of that, that God will be king of the whole world. He will be one. His name will be one, Zechariah chapter 14, in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, and the knowledge of Hashem will cover the world as the water covers the sea, and the Gentiles will come to the Jews and they will admit their error and their mistake. In fact, strikingly, Isaiah 53 contains the soliloquy, the first eight passages of the first 53rd chapter, the very chapter that Christians weaponize to convert Jews to Christianity. This is so sad. This is why my heart goes out to Christians. Nebuch, Nebuch. Isaiah 53's first eight passages contain the soliloquy of what the shocked non-Jews will say when the Mashiach comes about, not all the Jews, about the righteous remnant of the Jewish people. It's mind-blowing. But the key is they will recognize that Jewish suffering triggered their repentance and therefore saved them, and the Jews suffered as a direct result of their iniquities. Two things. And then I then God speaks to the Jews resume speaking to the Jews in Isaiah 53, verse 9 to 12. I'm not going there because that's beyond the scope of this conversation. 52, 15, which introduces 53, 1, it's the passage right before it tells us this is what the kings of nations will say. This, everyone misunderstands this. As I get this, that's how it goes. When Mashiach comes, there will be a ingathering of the exiles. Hashem will Call forth to the north, give back to the south, hold not back. Hashem will find you from the ends of the earth and bring you home. See Isaiah chapter 43. Very openly, the return of the exiles and the lost tribes. Ezekiel chapter 37. The, the vision that Ezekiel had, whether it was a veridical or non-veridical, of the dry bones that resurrect, we are told explicitly this is a symbol, a sign of the resurrection and the restoration of Israel openly. And take two sticks in your hand, one for Ephraim, one for Yehuda, put them in your hand, they become one. The restoration of lost Jews from all over the world. It's the ingathering. And Ezekiel continues, a chapter that's pregnant with Messianic prophecy, tells about the Mashiach himself, calls him, identifies the Messiah as David, that's his name. And verse 24 and 25 tells us that the Jewish people will be keeping all the commandments when the true Mashiach comes. The Messiah is called the Nasi in Tanakh, Nasi. Know that word, Nasi, it means the prince. Okay? That word is used very frequently about Mashiach in Tanakh, and it's used at the end of the book of Ezekiel, I believe 21 times referring to Mashiach. So it's a big word. I want you to get to know it. I want you to learn Hebrew, holy brothers and sisters. 
The building of the base Hamigdash will is described in the last three passages of the same chapter, Ezekiel 37. I'll build my sanctuary among them, and there's going to be a world peace. The unused blueprints of the Messianic temple come into view from Ezekiel 40 through 47, really. From 40 through 40. If you want to be really technical, it's 41 through 47. We have the exact description of what the Messianic temple will look like, and it's going to be on the Harabayat right there, and everyone's going to want it. Don't think to yourself, these people are going to be against it, that's going to be against it. <laughs> no one, all this shtusim, all the foolishness you hear now, everyone will be very happy. That's where it belongs on Mount Moriah. It'll be completely rebuilt, and the nations will, because they recognize the true God, there'll only be one religion in the world. All the nations will recognize Hashem. They will come to the Jews and say, they'll admit, surely we've inherited lies and vanity where is no, there is no truth. How can a man make unto himself gods when they are not? Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19 and 20. And they'll grab their hem of a shirt, excuse me, the hem of a shirt, that's correct, and grab it. Because some, why have they grabbed the hem of a Jew? What? Why? Jews wearing a shirt and the non-Jew has to grab it. Why do they grab it? Why can't they just walk over to Jew? Because Jews don't know what to do sometimes. I'm telling the truth. I want to tell you, if you're not sure you're Jewish or not, you assume you're not Jewish. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Who knows? But Jews don't know how to handle those who embrace the Jewish faith. They're going to say, we demand to know. And today, there's such a huge Noahide movement. These are people who embrace the Jewish faith. They don't join the Jewish nation, but they embrace the Jewish faith. It's huge today. I don't even know the numbers. In fact, there's an, <laughs> there are even datings there are Noahides who are single. Noahides who are single who want to marry another Noahide. And I, I'm just telling you, there's, there's datingnoah.com. I'm not kidding. There's a whole site for people who are Noachites who want to marry someone else who's a Noachite who believes in the one God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Could you imagine dating Noah.com? Amazing. Amazing. That's what's going on today. There's such a, because we are living in a time when we can hear the footsteps of the Messiah now. It's, everything is unfolding today. So the ingathering, the full knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the building of the temple, the restoration of the, of the commonwealth. These are all explicit. And war will come to an end. Do you see what's going on in Ukraine today? So much war and destruction. That means Mashiach isn't here yet. You see what's going on in, in Gaza? Gaza was always a problematic place. David HaMelech had to deal with big problems in that region in his time. It was a place where the Pelishtim were. I'm not kidding. I, 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 no pun intended. Just That's actually part of the tribe of Yehuda. So that will come to an end. You see what's going on in the Arabian Peninsula, more specifically Yemen, war. And those are, I just mentioned three wars of, I think there are, 27 wars currently raging in the world, those are three that every one of you are familiar with. That all comes to an end. There's no war. There's a peace. Because in the view of Tanakh, the reason why there's war is really because people are not of the same accord spiritually. And it's very striking that, in fact, that's what comes into view. In these wars, there is an undercurrent a subtext of religious of religious battles it's it's not over what you think it's really these are really on a fundamental level they are religious battles how iran which is a a country that's majority shia it's the largest shia country in the world managed to have any kind of relationship with sunnis it's really crazy stuff. So that all comes to an end. The world will, the nation will not lift up a sword against nation, neither will they learn of war anymore. 
very famous passage found in Isaiah. Micha, Micah, copied Isaiah. Micha, it's not copied as in plagiarized, but he simply quoted him. That's why in Isaiah 2 it says, this is a vision of Hashem, and Micha doesn't say, Micah does not say that. And incidentally, the whole Christian Bible forgot to mention that. Why did the Christian Bible forget to mention that? Because none of those things happened. These are, these are the key signs and, of course, the resurrection of the dead. The grave is a temporary dwelling. The grave is... People who lie in the grave are called the sheikh ne'ofar in Isaiah 26, verse 19. It's like a renting an apartment. It's just a temporary place, but the body of the faithful resurrects because their bodies, physical bodies, have become infused by the sanctity of their faithful life. So those are the events that will occur. When Mashiach comes, there will be no rebellion in the world. Now, people will make mistakes careless mistakes, because we'll be human. It just will be so obvious what the truth is that no one would ever rebel against Hashem. That will come to an end. There will be unintentional sins, and for that, it is provided in, in Ezekiel 45 that the sin sacrifice, which is only for unintentional sins, will be, rest will be restored. And Mashiach, the Messiah himself, is going to bring a carbon chatos for his own unintentional sins and for the unintentional sins of the nation. Please read it for yourself, Ezekiel 45, verse 20 through 22. So you need to understand this, that there will be no sin in the world. People think that maybe we'll be robots. We won't. We won't be any different than we are today. Except all the truth will be nigla, will be open, unplecked in Yiddish. It will be open for everyone to see. Now we live in a world where what is sweet is called bitter, and what is bitter is called sweet. What is light is called darkness. What is darkness is called light. We are living in an oilam hasheker. We're living in a world of lies. What is what this world values is really worthless, and what's really valuable, what really is worth something in this world, is by the world is considered worthless. Do you understand, sweethearts? So it's not that people think we'll become robotic. We don't be robots. And I'll give you an example of what this means. I'm sure you cook, whatever you may. Some of you are big fancy cooks, but you all do something in the kitchen, right? And I'm sure you've burnt yourself, right? Or you, while working in the kitchen, you cut yourself, right? So what was the second thing you said after you burnt yourself? What was the second thing you said after you cut yourself? Happens, right? You, you say, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> that always happens. First you say, ouch, right? Or, Ooh, but what's the second thing you always say? You picked a, a pot and the pot was boiling hot and you didn't you were not mindful of what you were doing. You were cutting onions or cutting a tomato with a big blade and you you didn't hold it properly. You weren't paying attention. You cut your finger. You always say, I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. So what does it mean? It means you would never ordinarily put your hand on a fire. Could you? Of course you can. You can stick your hand in boiling water. You just never would. Why wouldn't you? Because you wouldn't want to. Why would you want to burn yourself? Why would you cut yourself? But we do. Why? Because we're not paying attention. We're not being careful. So the errors that occur in, a, in the kitchen, we have no free will in the kitchen, meaning... It's so obvious what's good and bad, meaning good means cooking well and bad means injuring yourself in the process. So that's what will be in the Messianic age. People will make mistakes, but there won't be free will. Mean It'll be very obvious that sin is wickedness and no one would ever want to rebel. There's no rebellion in the Messianic age. You understand that? So these are the signs of the true Mashiach in the first Christian century. None of these things occurred. In fact, the very opposite occurred. There was no temple built. There was a temple destroyed. The knowledge of God didn't cover the world in the first century. The opposite, because of the wars with Rome, the knowledge of God was diminished. The observance of mitzvot was diminished. Not only was the temple destroyed rather than built, there was no ingathering in the first 
century, the Jews, not every Jew, but the Jews were largely expelled, and the second commonwealth was destroyed by Titus and Vespasian, by Rome, who would be the heir to the Christian religion. In fact, if you wanted to know exactly what Mashiach is supposed to do, take a look at the first century, and whatever happened in the first century, it's the exact opposite. There's no resurrection. Many, many, many Jews died in the wars with Rome. So it's exactly, that's what Edom is, this punk fakert, exactly the opposite, okay? So these are the events that will occur in the Messianic age, and you just need to understand what it means. It's just the the truth will be obvious to everyone. And no one would want to rebel against Hashem. No one. Now we live in Olam HaSheker. We live in a world of lies. And that's all you're seeing around you are lies. And the question is, can you hold on? Can you remain loyal to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Thank you for your thoughtful question. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. אשר מלך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כבלות הכל לבדו, אם לא כנועה, והוא היה, והוא עובד